Welcome back to Femre Canine Training. On today's video, we're going to be answering some more of your questions to help you become a high-level canine leader that can raise perfect canine companions. Why do you do that to me when you say perfect canine companions as I if I'm mine. a perfect canine companion? Your words, not mine, dear. So welcome back guys. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and this is not my wonderful canine companion, but it's my uh, fantastic wife who you guys have asked your questions to over on Instagram. She's collated them. She's going to ask them to me and hopefully we're going to be able to help answer some of your worries, concerns or just general questions. So let's dive into the very first one. Maybe people will want to know when you're going to release your perfect wife course. My perfect wife course. I'm still very much working on the uh, principles behind that. How would you recommend introducing a new puppy to a house cat or maybe just cats in general? New puppy to cats. Okay, so yeah, again, this one is a very common, common one. I imagine you get asked this all the time, I do you? Get asked yeah, this. I get this one. And, um, very common. The main thing here is around the cat is in control of the scenario so wherever possible scent is always helpful so if you can get something if you're getting a dog from a breeder for example get something that smells like the cat rub a bit of a cloth on it take that to the breeder and just let the puppy even if it's just on the way home let the puppy familiarize itself with the scent so that that isn't the first thing it wants to explore flip that and do the same with cats that's kind of a nice little doesn't matter if you don't do that step but it it can just help a little bit then that first meeting is crucial and a lot of that will depend on personalities so i can give you some over uh, overarching tips and themes but depending on what breed of puppy you have as to how kind of playful they are what kind of mannerisms and temperament they have and then likewise for the cat the way that goes can mm. change drastically every single situation what you don't ever want to happen is for the puppy to think it's acceptable to chase the cat. So I always recommend doing it on a long line, keeping a lead on the dog. But what you want to avoid is then overly punishing the dog with that tool and creating a negative connotation on the dog side. Likewise, though, you don't want them to create a negative connotation on the cat side. So patience is absolutely key. One thing you can do is make sure both parties are hungry and ideally at least the puppy, it's harder to do with cats because you can't just exercise a cat, but the, the puppy is incredibly tired. So exercise them, work them, time it around a time when the puppy's kind of ready for a little bit of a nap anyway and it's not going mad and got the zoomies mm. and that they're hungry and maybe do feeding time out of your hand close to each other and just slowly let them familiarize themselves with each other if they're acting appropriately and neither of them's overly fearful or growling barking claws out at that stage they can have access to some food um, and just try and make it as a positive experience as you can what's you don't want to happen neither of these in this situation if your puppy's on a lead and the cat has a place to take itself away if it feels uncomfortable you need to remember that they're not going to die so stop panicking that's the thing if you go into that situation oh, right, here we go we're doing the introduction and oh, i hope this goes well this has got to go well because i can't get rid of the cat and you've lost before you even go into that room you've lost you are the leader in that scenario calm consistent leadership Get yourself ready, get yourself set, and get yourself calm. Make sure that at least the dog's tired, and ideally they're both hungry. You go into that scenario, I am in control, this is my room, my house, I'm in charge. <sighs> Relax. If you're relaxed and calm, we'll give you a bit of a stroke and a play and a bit of food. If the cat needs to take itself away, then you sit on the floor with the puppy and let the cat observe. You might need to do that for the first 10 times. Then maybe the cat gets a bit more comfortable with coming a bit closer and will take a bit of food out of your hand. It's got to be very flexible and adaptable. There's not a one-size-fits-all routine mm. for things like well, this. Well, some cats just aren't interested at all, no. are they? And you need to then, maybe the solution and the management strategy for the, them to co-live in peace is to have enough control of the dog and to ensure that the cat has enough enough space to take itself mm. away and the dog doesn't pin it under a sofa thinking it's playing you need to be able to make sure you call the dog away and it understands that that's not how we behave around the cat if you don't want to get on that's okay but you're not going to try and fight or kill each other because i'm in control and again we just want to do that patiently calmly consistently and as a good leader is kind of the yeah. overview so with like a this one is particularly about house cat you would rec would you recommend that the cat has a space or a room where the dog doesn't go that 
the cat can escape to because if the cat doesn't go outside yeah, potentially um yeah you might want to do that i wouldn't want to live in a house where the cat can go somewhere but the dog can't how are you going to enforce no, that not all necessarily the time? permanently but, but yeah if you're going to do the meeting yeah, yeah i would do the meeting say if you were going to do it in a living room with the door open so the cat can take itself away okay yeah. that didn't go brilliantly but no problem we we'll to try it again next time. And again, just build it up slowly. Patience is the key. There's no rush for them to get along. Don't create any panic. Don't create any anxiety or fear from your energy levels. Um, and just be patient and build it up slowly and make it as positive as it can be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're happy? I think that's a, a very quick it's... overview. And again, all, as is always the answer, if you're genuinely really concerned about it, get a behaviourist to come and do it with you. I would, it would be a service I would offer, um, not so much now as we do most of our stuff online, but I would, you can come and you can have someone there for that, at least that first one that can guide you through the process. And even if it doesn't go well, they can give you enough tips and strategy of, okay, cool, this is what's actually happening here. So keep doing this and next time and over time you'll build up to it. Yeah. And, and you probably just need to be aware of the temperament of both animals yeah. don't and you and again if you don't feel confident then that might be where you can get somebody in to come and help you with that process and also if you've like not yet picked a puppy but you know that you're going to be introducing the puppy into a household with other animals a mm-hmm. cat then you can temperament select based on and also that. you can find a breeder yeah. that breeds in a household where there's cats and other animals so the puppy okay. is raised there's loads you can do and ultimately if you're so concerned then you shouldn't be getting a puppy i get wanting to do it properly but if it's if what i've just said is still really scary then maybe you're not in a position of leadership and kind of comfortability to be able to manage a situation mm-hmm. like that that might suggest that maybe having a cat and a dog isn't the right solution for you or you're not in the right time to be able to make that decision because as much as I'm Tough always going to be uh, biased and swayed towards the dog in the situation the cat deserves to live in peace and harmony as well and if you're not sure that you can bring a dog in and have both of them be happy then that's on you as the leader mm-hmm. you have a responsibility for both animals so okay Next question. Uh, got an almost two-year-old Connie Corso. Corso, yes. Been through a lot of training. He's very obedient. Our problem started two weeks ago when he started barking for no reason when my daughter and grandson are talking to me. It's an annoying bark. And there's more detail, but that's basically it's barking. two years old now. Yeah. And, and it started happened two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago. That's interesting. Barking when people are talking. Do you think that could be a lockdown thing? I was just about to say, these questions are really difficult because, again, what happens is if you were to seek kind of my help in a one-to-one in-person consultation, you would send that kind of in an email and I'd look at it. and Okay, cool. That's what you think's happening. And I'm going to have to come in and assess what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the time, what the owners think is happening isn't actually what's happening. Obviously, the barking is, but the cause behind it yeah. and, and where it stems from. And did that start two weeks ago, or is that something that's been bubbling for months based on an issue during one of its fear periods or one of its lack of socialization? There's so many intricate variables there that can come from that. Um, <clears throat> the fix, luckily, would be quite similar regardless of what the cause is. Um, and again, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you pro- I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of most probably how I would address that based on um, the vast majority of causes. So this is one of those scenarios where, again, if you're not comfortable, you need to speak to somebody because what we don't want to do is someone give you a person. solution. Yeah, someone in person give you a solution. You implement that, and it was the wrong solution because we don't know what the root cause is that then triggers further aggression ends up in someone getting bit or hurt we don't want to do that so usually for a cause like this i would first come in and i'd address your relationship Uh, okay your obedience is good lots of people can have good obedience in low distraction environments when there's food involved that doesn't mean you've got a good relationship that means the dog is willing to be bribed with food and and you've done teaching Mm -hmm. them what to expect to earn that food it's not a bad thing um but it's a very basic layer of the overarching picture of good canine ownership. So I'd address that. If there's an issue there, then first of all, we address that issue with your leadership and ensure that the dog sees you as a calm, consistent leader. 
that then means that we have the ability to be able to say, I do want this and I don't want that and you must listen to me because I'm in charge and I'm in control. We then address what is the dog barking at? Is that just a playful, I want to play bark? Is that a don't you dare talk to her? Is like it, a guarding. Yeah, thing. and there's lots of different variables. First of all, what kind of bark is it? Is it an anxious, fearful response? And then where does that come from? Would then address how we might go in. We might go in with quite stern corrections. And like that's pack it in, stop. We might go in with a very positive based approach. And they would be probably the two options that we would have in a, to put in a behavior modification program for a scenario like that. One would be having them on some kind of corrective tool. And the instant that behavior starts to rise, we correct that and we let them know that that's not acceptable. So that's like a prong collar. Yeah, prong collar, choke chain. We could maybe do it more positively with an e-collar. There's lots of different ways that we could do verbal correction, depending on the sensitivity and the temperament of the dog. Again, we always try and go at the lowest level of correction as possible, if it's physical in particular, and we build up to wherever it gets the job done. Because what we want to do is ensure that this doesn't become a bigger issue that then gets the dog killed because it has to go to a shelter or be euthanized because it's bit somebody, for example. So that would be one opportunity, or we might go down a very positive route, especially if it's um, we're concerned that any kind of corrective measure could cause further negativity and devolve into further problems. With a positive-based approach, I would probably utilize a place command. So in that situation, we would have an obedient... But again, this won't work unless there's that relationship there in the first place, because we're not bribing our dog to stop. We are saying, I am in control, and this is what I want you to do. So we've got two options. I am in control, pack it in, stop it. That's the more correction-based approach. Or I am in control, you need to go and do this. And that would be more of an obedience-based approach. Uh, and that's probably more of a management strategy as opposed to a, a root cause fix but that might be required if we're concerned that the correction might cause further issues so i would have a raised bed whenever you were in that interaction with somebody the dog needs to learn that it gets sent to its place and it goes into a sit and stay on its raised bed if it does that it gets praise and reward after we finished with this conversation and we build up that connotation that okay you're having that conversation doesn't matter what's causing the response whatever it is that's causing that response you need to go and sit over there and wait calmly and quietly for me to finish because i'm in control if you do that then good things are going to happen if you come off that then we're going to send you back and we're going to go through that battle of wills until you understand that no you are going there because i'm in charge and i've told you i'm having yeah. a conversation here you're not going to interrupt me and again there's two ways you can kind of go the more physical corrective way a lot of people don't like to do that positive only world then we can go down the more uh, positive based obedience route but that's more of a management strategy but again two ways would decide which one i would go for that first of all would be client preference so if you're like i want you to come and help me but i have zero tolerance for physical corrections I personally disagree with that, but you're the client, you make that decision, okay? Well, then we're going down the more management strategy utilizing obedience. Or it might be, I'm going to assess what's happening here and I, as the expert, will dictate whether I think that one method will cause more issues if we follow that method. So again, that's where I can't give you a rock solid approach, but that would be the thought process that I would go through. And each step I would watch, I would assess, and then we'd move into the next step and move forward. So I hope that there was something I there. Do, I like a place command. Mm -hmm. I yeah. know. We've got some, I've got some plans for, so this training channel, by the way, if you didn't see my update over on the main channel, um, we're not getting our puppy. Again, if you want to know why, go and watch. It's titled We Need to Talk uh, over on Femre Canine Show. That'll explain why. And the idea behind this channel is we were going to do these Q&As till we get our new puppy. And then we were going to do some more. I've hired a full-time videographer to then film me working with dogs. Now, obviously, we're not going to be doing that with our puppy anymore. But we are working on some ways that with that full-time videographer that starts in August, um, that... We're going to be filming some other consultations, some other obedience work, some work with my dogs and work with other people's dogs and potentially, hopefully, some of your guys' dogs. So we've got lots of things in the pipeline and you'll see me utilising the place command for a vast majority uh, or at least a, a large amount of, of either behaviour modification programmes or just obedience in the first place. It's a very useful tool. I'm going to transition it here in the studio. We've got a, a sofa here. So I'm going to document sending Sully onto the sofa as a place command when somebody comes in the door here that's just 
off camera this side so if the postman comes for example to deliver a parcel or the post i'm going to show you how i would utilize okay cool because i've been doing some reaction work with sully to uh, for a future video idea of can you teach a labrador to be a guard dog so the postman will come and sully will sound the alarm for me but where people go wrong is not having the ability to thank you very much for letting me know but now you need to go and do this and you'd be in a similar situation whatever's causing that barking is is irrelevant really but okay whatever's happening there all right but this is what i now want you to do and that's i'm going to demonstrate that with sully here and you can put it on i could put it on my desk here that i can make sully jump onto the desk i could put it on a sofa you could put it on a raised bed it doesn't matter the principle's all the same so we're gonna have a bit of fun doing all that we've got loads of fun ideas aren't we loads of ideas loads of ideas just full of them mm, it's gonna be good fun but yeah cool should we wrap that up yeah didn't know whether you wanted to mention to people about getting in touch with us if they're in the uk and i think we'll do that when we've ironed out how, how to go about that because i don't want to just get a thousand emails in one go and not be able to manage it so yes. we're going to work out the best way for you guys ultimately what i want to be able to do is offer my services for free to you guys we've just got a new um, like a training field super secure six foot fence field that we've got access to now and we want you guys to be able to come along have free sessions whether it's behavior consultations or whether it's puppy training and then we're going to film it and put it on this channel so that everybody can learn that's the the idea behind what we're trying to do but the as is always the case organization the actual management of that yeah. is quite a lot especially because of where the field there's only a couple of parking spaces so we just need to make sure that we're doing everything by the book and all that so yeah all that all that, all that. aye but that's um oh someone asked recently let's just quickly answer this where we're from in the uk in they think we're from scotland definitely not from we're scotland definitely not from scotland is it someone in america i'm guessing yeah, yeah. all our accents or, are weird well i think he, I think he said that he thinks that we're from Leeds, but his girlfriend, who has spent time in England, thinks we're from Scotland. Definitely not from Scotland. We're not from Leeds either. We're in the Midlands, right? Slap bang in the middle. So our, Derby, yeah. Darbados, yeah. as the uh, locals would mm. refer to it. Yeah, our accent's actually very neutral, isn't it, for a English accent? I think I don't know if it is or if we just think Presume that. Presume it is. Well, anyway, yeah, we're right <laughs> we're bang. We're going in the now. Cool. See you in a bit. Bye. <laughs>